Hey, it's Pastor Mike. If you enjoy listening to this podcast and make it a regular part of your day, can I ask for your regular support? We really can't make any of our sermon series or devotions without the continual support of friends like you. Time of Grace, in case you didn't know, is 100% donor-funded, meaning it is your gifts that make it possible for us to use television and print and digital media to share the good news of God's amazing grace. Just click on the link in the episode notes, and thank you for all of your prayers and all of your support. God bless. Someone once told me that the reason they worry is because they feel like that way they're being proactive. The problem with worrying, though, is is that it never solves problems. In my own experience, when I worry about things, all it does is give me stomach aches, headaches, I can't sleep at night, it totally messes with my diet, I'm super irritable. Worrying isn't being proactive, it's like being radioactive. It is toxic. But here's the problem. A lot of people don't realize they have another option. They only assume that they can only worry. And that's why I want to share with you about the Apostle Paul. He was an ancient church father who had lots to worry about. Literally, the guy was under attack all the time. He got beat up multiple times, always under death threats. He would be in prison because he shared that he loved Jesus and that Jesus loves the world. And so one time while he's in prison, he writes this letter to a group of Christians in Philippi. We call this letter the Philippians. And in Philippians, you would assume that he'd write about all the things he's worried about, the things that he's making him sad, that all these bad problems. But in fact, this is one of the most encouraging letters that Paul has written. And in it, he gives us the alternative to worrying. This is what he writes in Philippians chapter 4, beginning with verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So what Paul is saying is that when you're dealing with worry and anxiety, you have an alternative. You don't have to play all these scenarios out in your mind, but you get to take them to God in prayer. You get to say, God, my problems are in your hands. You get to deal with them. And you get to do it with a thanks, thankful heart, with thanksgiving, which sounds weird, right? But why can we do this with thanksgiving is because we know that God takes bad situations and redeems them. He turns them into good situations. And here's the added bonus. When you pray, You don't get stomach aches, you don't get headaches, you don't get sleepless nights, you don't have issues with your diet. Instead, he says this in verse 7, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When you consciously say, I'm not going to worry about this, I'm going to give this to God, he replaces all those negative feelings with peace, a peace that goes beyond your understanding. It just wraps you in God's love and lets you know that everything's going to be all right. And then Paul gives us one more tip on what we can do instead of worrying. He says this in verse 8. And finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think about such things. So now he says, engage your mind. Your mind is a very powerful thing. A lot of times we think that because we have an emotion, we're scared, we're angry, we're anxious, that we have to give in to those feelings. If I'm feeling this way, then I have to act upon that. It's not true. In fact, God has given you your mind so that you can control all of those emotions. Your mind can help you control your emotions. And now you get to think about not the negative, not about the what-if scenarios, not allowing yourself to go down that anticipatory anxiety, but now you get to think about what is pure, lovely, noble, praiseworthy. And what's more true, noble, praiseworthy than Jesus Christ? The Apostle Paul didn't just preach this, he lived this. If you read through his letters written for us in the New Testament, you find him constantly talking about Jesus. Jesus Christ this. Christ Jesus that. He's always contemplating what Jesus did for him, that he brought him into a relationship with our eternal God. He forgave him his sins. He took away his shame and his guilt. He thinks about Jesus' resurrection and the power that has for us right now to embolden us to speak uh, words of truth to those we love, to to deal with realities of life and say, God's got this. I'm going to get through this. What you think about, what you pray about matters. And so the next time you feel anxious, the next time you think, I need to worry about this, don't do it. Don't worry. Instead, pray. Pray to God. Let him know that he's in control. Submit yourself to him and he will give you his peace that surpasses all understanding that will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I like to worry and 
it's very easy for all of us. We think that we're being proactive by doing that, but really we're just hurting ourselves. And so God, from here on out, help us in those moments of anxiety and worry to give it all to you in prayer. Help us to take that moment. Sometimes it takes a second. All we need to say is help or, or um, I'm here, God, <laughs> save me. Whatever it is, Lord, we trust that you're going to replace that worry with your peace. And we are so grateful for that. It's in Jesus' name we pray.